Well, good Sunday to you. And as we start off this week, I think we are going to see a huge week of weather. And that's mainly because of the extreme heat we're going to see across the West, a big cool down in the Northeast, and it could be really downright chilly in some areas. And we've not even touched on the severe weather that's expected, not just today, but even over the next couple of days. It's not a huge severe weather outbreak, but it's certainly there. So let's start from nearly 20,000 miles away. Look at this view. Beautiful shot of our planet here where we live. We've got the big storms here firing up across the plains. This was overnight, and then today we're seeing more of those. A lot of clouds across the east. That will continue. We saw those increase yesterday, but I'm interested in what's going on here across the tropics. We've got this easterly fetch here. That's our trade winds blowing, but look at what's going on here in the upper levels. You can see these high cirrus and upper level clouds getting sheared off. That tells you that we do have a lot of wind shear out there. Not really what you want to see if you want to see hurricanes start to develop. Something else that is of, of notice too, look here across the Yucatan Peninsula. We actually have quite a bit of smoke blowing off here as they're dealing with a lot of agriculture burns here. So there could be some haze here across southeast Texas as some of that moves ashore. But nothing like what we saw with the Canadian uh, wildfire smoke what was that last year. I think we were dealing with a lot of that across the United States. The Atlantic Basin way above average by a good two to four degrees Fahrenheit, maybe more in some cases. And it's been that way for the last several months. So we're starting off this tropical season already up here. We're also seeing some cooler water here starting to upwell off of the west coast of South America as our La Nina season starts to take over. And here's why this is important. We're going to talk a little bit about the teleconnections here. You Get some cooler water here. Clearly, you would reduce the temperature of the atmosphere. But as you heat things up here in North America and across the Northern Hemisphere, while it's not going to cool off dramatically here, that thermal gradient, that difference in temperatures between the mid latitudes and also down toward the tropics starts to decrease. That would likely decrease some of the stronger mid-level winds, even some low-level winds too. And that is one of the things that I think you have to look at as we develop a La Nina year and a La Nina conditions for enhanced tropical storm and hurricane development. Does it happen this year? Who knows? But some of the teleconnections are starting to line up. We clearly see the warm water. The good news is no tropical development expected across the Gulf just because of all that wind shear we saw there on the satellite. And that should continue for the next several days. Now, big changes on the way too in many areas as we see some severe weather possible. Not just today, Sunday, but also into Monday. I think we gotta watch this area right here from Iowa, Wisconsin, into parts of Missouri, Illinois, there could be a few tornadoes, a few strong thunderstorms heading into Monday, and then we start to kick our change off. We start to see a decent high develop here in the upper levels across the West. That is gonna create some really hot conditions. We have excessive heat watches that have already been issued as this large dome of high pressure develops, and then across the East, we develop Northwest flow. We're watching this upper low swing through the Great Lakes. That's gonna drop our temperatures below average. It could be really cool next weekend in some areas pretty wild to see this shaping up and if it takes place it is june but wow check these temperatures out across the far southwest now let's time some of this out because i want to show you the heat that's going to be building as we move into monday i mean yeah we're close to triple digit heat across places like phoenix down into vegas but look what happens as we move into tuesday we start to heat up into the central valley of california triple digit heat starting to move in here by the time we get into wednesday that heat expands even further as the atmosphere literally gets thicker you get more compressional heating it's really heating up. So now we're talking about low triple digit heat here from the Central Valley. We're almost pushing 110 in some of the lower elevations. And then by Thursday, that heat continues. In fact, some areas could push very close to 110 from Phoenix to Tucson up to Las Vegas, all up and down the Central Valley. Death Valley could be close to 120 one day this week or maybe a couple of days. Really, the only escape is going to be above 4,000 feet. Places like this up into the higher elevations more like those uh, islands in the sky, if you will, across the southwest. We're going to talk about the cool in the east, but let's get through the storms first because that's going to have to happen. Decent severe weather possible as we head through Sunday across Kansas, Nebraska, and really look at this from the Canadian border all the way down to the Rio Grande here across the central plains. Some strong to severe thunderstorms possible, and I think those extend a little bit off to the east too, down toward Houston. It does include Dallas. A few tornadoes possible too as we get a lot of wind shear starting to develop into the afternoon. So the primary threat will be here, I think, across Kansas, Nebraska, and north, I think maybe even into South Dakota too, heading into the afternoon. A lot of updrafts here, and with that, 
Strong updrafts will create some hail, and some of it could be pretty big, too, as we head into the afternoon as well. Tomorrow, not as big of a widespread severe weather event, but if it hits in your backyard, it doesn't have to really be widespread, right? But I do want to talk about this small tornado risk that's starting to develop here across parts of Wisconsin and Illinois, and also across Texas. We'll see a few tornadoes possible, too, here. So on Monday, at the surface, we're going to have winds coming in out of the south like this. That's going to bring in a lot of moisture off of the Gulf. It's going to continue to bring that north. As you move up in the atmosphere on Monday, you've got more of a westerly component wind. So when you get those southerly winds here at the surface coming in like this, upper level winds at about 18,000 feet moving in from the west, those storms will want to spin up and rotate. So tornado risk potentially tomorrow here, not a high one, but definitely you want to be weather aware. So let's time some of the storms out. As we move through Sunday, these storms here across Iowa could get strong as we head into the evening hours, but the big storms start to develop here from Dallas to Houston, up and down the Plains states. As we head into the afternoon and evening hours, some of these could continue nocturnally into the night with some big hail, some strong damaging winds, and even a few tornadoes on some of the stronger storms. They'll start to cluster up as we head into the overnight, so that damaging wind threat would likely continue, I think, especially with these complexes. And then the storms continue early in the day, not nearly as strong as what we're going to see in the afternoon. And then as we head into the afternoon hours tomorrow, we see the storm starting to fire up here into parts of Missouri, even Arkansas, down into parts of Mississippi, and then up around Chicago, right in here. That's the area we've got to watch, I think, as that wind shear increases heading into tomorrow afternoon. Across the east on this Sunday, scattered showers and thunderstorms, they'll be around. It's not going to be a complete washout, but back here, here come the big storms late tonight into early Monday morning. These will start to weaken. I think they'll start to fall apart, and then we'll see a renewed line of showers and storms start to develop Uh, as we head into the afternoon of Monday into Monday evening. It'll first start back here across Iowa. Now, I think you also have to watch out right in here because those conditions will be favorable for something to fire up with that strong wind shear. So we could see these storms pop here across northern Illinois back into Iowa, and even in parts of Michigan and Indiana. I think you got to keep an eye on the weather heading into tomorrow night as these storms form. Look at the temperature. It's going to be a big deal over the next couple of days, especially as we see a bit of a cool down. Now, for the first part of the week, not really too bad, right? We're back into the 70s and 80s. A lot of cloud cover, too, keeping our temperatures at bay. Temperatures across the northeast in the 70s, even some 60s into parts of northern Maine, and a bit of a cool down here. We have a kind of a northeast flow starting to develop. That keeps our temperatures down into parts of Maine into the 60s and 50s. Some warm temperatures start to develop across the south, especially into Florida, close to triple digit heat here from Orlando, Gainesville into South Georgia. We could get very close to 100, I think. And then here comes the cool air. Look at it starting to develop here across the Great Lakes. That would be Thursday. I mean, this is Thursday afternoon. We're looking at 40s and 50s up here around the Great Lakes with that cold pool of air aloft. And then as we head into Friday, this, I don't know. I mean, these models are sometimes on the extreme side of things. But this is really interesting. We could see temperatures Friday afternoon on June 7th in the 40s and 50s around the Great Lakes. Is it really going to be that cold? I don't know. But let me tell you, the last couple of model runs have been very consistent in a very chilly pattern setting up. So I don't know. I'm just waiting for someone to say down in the comments, just imagine if it was winter, right? Yeah, this would be pretty, pretty rough. Hot across Florida though. You want the heat, go down here. We'll be likely close to the triple digit heat by next weekend. And you know, as we look kind of down the road in the mid levels and upper levels, this is going to kind of reflect what we were seeing there on the GFS and why it's staying cool. You've got this ridge developing here across the central part of the country. That's probably going to keep us a little warm. And then we see that cool air persisting here in the Northeast, finally breaking down maybe by the following week. But I do want to show you something. If you're across the West and you're wondering how long this is going to last, you've got this weird lobe of cold air trying to move in aloft as we head into next weekend. That actually would likely drop our temperatures back near or below normal. So after this big heat wave, we're back down. Wild weather. I'm telling you, it's a huge weather week. Thanks for checking the video out, guys, today. If it's your first time, my name is Travis Roberts. I'm a former television chief meteorologist. I've been out of that business now for almost five years, and I love forecasting. And If you like this kind of stuff, if you've made it this far in the video, maybe that means you really like it. All right, and I hope it's helpful for you, too. So come back and see me. I hope you'll subscribe. That really helps the channel a lot. See you next time.